Hello everyone and welcome to the Shooting Art Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and this is episode 7 of the podcast and today we've got such an awesome podcast ahead for you guys. We've got Alex um, Jerome, is that right? Re- Jerjomin. Jerjomin, that's the one, sorry. And um, we're going to be covering a lot of great topics today, covering his background, what he does as an artist and then we'll be bringing his, his um, information, his advice on the student education as a whole. So let's just get straight uh, straight into it. How's it going, man? What's up, everybody? <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. Thank you so much for coming on. Like it's really cool. Um, before it's we... no problem. <laughs> before we get into um, the podcast, um, like like I said, um, it'd be great if you can just give us like a brief overview um, about yourself, like what you do, maybe uh, what games um, you're interested in, and so forth, and just um, what you do as an artist. Yeah, um, well, right now I'm a, I'm a senior environment artist at Digital Extremes working on Warframe, which is a really cool game because it's free. That's sick. Plugging Warframe. Uh, but I used to work in Microsoft, used to work in Lionhead uh, on Fable series, and before that I used to work in Rare on very awesome games called Kinect Sports. They were just the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also do uh, a bunch of freelance, so uh, freelance is my like second job, and uh, when I don't have freelance, I do tutorials on the Plural site. Awesome. Uh, which used to be uh, Digital Tutors, yeah? Yep, yep. So yeah, I started when the digital tutors were were a thing, and then Pluralsight bought them, and now I do Pluralsight. So where did where did you first start? What was the like? Where was where did it all begin? Like, what got you into art? Oh well, uh, I wanted to buy a new. Uh, oh, what got me into art? Whoa, that's a big one. Um, <laughs> well, the main question straight away. That started like a long time ago, man. I, I was probably about fourteen, fifteen when I first like discovered three D. Okay. You know. And uh, it was basically like I used to play uh, Counter Strike. You remember that? Yep. And uh, yeah, and and people were making like you know mods and stuff and mm-hmm. skins for the guns. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. So I found this book in the computer store on how to how to make your own guns and stuff. And then from then I wanted to become an architect. So I started learning CAD and all these kind of things. And it so- slowly warped into me wanting to work in Pixar. So I started learning animation. Uh, I was really bad at the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, I ended up going to college, really increasing my skill there, then university. And then somehow I became me. <laughs> you know, it's in your environment. Right? So that's so dope. Yep. And it was in England you went to university, wasn't it? Yep, yep, yep. I, uh, I'm i originally from uh, from Latvia, but uh, awesome. I lived in UK for about 12 years, I think, something like that. Two years, right, okay. And now yep. you're in Canada. And now I'm Canada, Gee, temporarily. Time. Temporarily. <laughs> and then, it's you... too cold in here. Well, that's the thing, because I've always wanted to... Um, like move to Canada because like um, some of my family are from Canada and I do want to experience yeah. it someday like at least get out because I've I've been stuck in Scotland for a long time I want to start exploring yeah. the world but like for me my whole goal has always been New Zealand like I would love to work for Weta like that has been like like that's my yeah. thing personally but um yeah so when it comes to the Shootout podcast obviously we talk about uh, the games and stuff you worked on and I guess maybe we can go in a bit more depth so you've worked on some really awesome games um, I'm not sure if you want to do an order. Um, like you said, you've been working on Warframe. Um, is there anything you're allowed to say um, on, like, say, Spiral, Fable, or anything that you'd like to talk about? Yeah. So, uh, well, so yeah, Fable. Fable was uh, my first like stylized studio. Well, before that, I worked on Epic Mickey, but I was a junior, so I basically was doing collisions. So that doesn't really count. Uh, so but yeah, Fable. After that, we were working on Kinect Sports, but the environments were kind of realistic. I did get to do a lot of work in there, but, you know, the game wasn't, uh, you know, not not my passion in a way, you know. And then Everything, Fable yeah. kind of, Fable really, like, taught me the the ways of the, the ways of the Force, if, <laughs> if you know what the I mean. The ways of the 3D. Exactly, yeah. So when I got to F- Fable, I was still fairly more, like, realistic modeler. Uh, I was doing the hard hard surface stuff as much as I could and when I when I when I got to Fable I was like nah it's time to learn the stylized and ever since Fable I now basically just obsessed with the stylized art style so whenever I have a chance uh, I'll do that and Fable Fable was awesome man it was uh, it was a great 
experience like everybody in Lionhead was like the most talented artist mm -hmm. there is you know every studio before you kind of go into the studio you think oh, I'm gonna meet a lot of like crazy artists and stuff like that but in reality like most people sort of you know on your kind of level and and you just bounce off each other but when I got to Lionhead it was like gods yeah. you know what I mean everybody was so so good and uh, you know I was just trying to keep up with them and uh, yeah, it was. I think Lion had literally just like made my career, and it it was my dream job. So like, if if it didn't close, I would probably stay working there for like forever. You know. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's it was so cool. Because like, yeah, what, what like obviously you're talking there about style and stuff. So would you say stylized is your definitely like go to, or is there like a sort of? I think a balance yeah. Between it's it's like i can do both right but i prefer st i have more fun when i do stylized yeah for sure i i like doing realistic stuff but for me like i think that there's a point of 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 your 3dness is when you kind of like i can pretty much model anything right yeah. and so like when when you when you kind of doing realistic stuff is just about copying you know a photograph so it, it's 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 fun because you when you see the end result like oh my god i completely recreated this train or this gun but but when you do stylized it's like it's always creative you know and, and you never know what you're gonna get so you're kind of always having fun with it you know and that's what i really love about it because like when i was um when i first checked out your portfolio on art station and that's one thing, um, everyone who's listening, make sure to go follow this guy. His work's really cool. Um, I saw um, your work on Pacific Rim. Like, you were making this... Um, yep. It's almost like a Transformer sort of design. And it was like the separation of, uh, for example, you've got the train the, the train piece. You've got, uh, for example, even your digital tutor stuff or plural social, should I say, now on there. Yeah. And then you go instantly to Spyro. Then you go Fable. It's like you've covered literally everything. And, yeah. And I think... like. I pers I'm not sure, I, I, I wouldn't say it's like an issue with me, but it's like, um, so I'm very uh, film orientated, like I want to mm -hmm. get into film, um, I've always been like Harry Potter mad, Lord of the Rings crazy, and um, yep. there's like this certain sort of look I've always wanted to go for, but would you say for artists, um, I guess, uh, anyone who's listening, do you think um, that range is important? Um, that's really about what you want to do, right? So it's like if you want to work on Call of Duty or, or uh, you know, uh, like if you want to work in film specifically, I think realistic stuff is is probably more important, right? right. But I think like with stylized, it's, it's a little bit interesting because it's like when you do stylized, especially today in the PBR age, it's like you have to actually be really good at making realistic stuff before you can bend the rules and and make them you know your own i i don't know i think it's maybe just my process but it's like when i make like stylized stone or stylized anything mm -hmm. i always try to like keep it grounded to reality as much as i can so like pbr values for the rocks would be as close to the real rocks as they can be and then i'm trying to get rid of as much noise information as possible without ruining the piece right yeah. so i think but i think the range is is like you know probably there are people who can't even do like realistic but can only do stylized and vice versa right so i think it's like if you want to work in a studio that does stylized stuff you of course have to know how to do stylized stuff yeah. and if you want to work in a studio that does realistic have to do realistic kind of thing because i think that's um like with me at the moment i i I'll just honestly say, like, I don't have the eye yet to understand style, um, stylized art. Um, yeah. Obviously, naturally, a lot of people tend to either overthink it or think sometimes it could be easier, but I think it's the completely yep. opposite. I think having that ability to make something simple, no, something that looks simple and make it... Uh, yeah. How, how, how could I, what's the way I'm trying to say this? It's like, when something looks simple, it's, like, not... In my yeah, eyes. Like, I, have, it's, it's... I have this like problem. Even now, like after sculpting like thousands of boulders, right? It's yeah. still a challenge for me because it's like making the most simplest object look good is is really hard because it's yeah. like you you you. What makes your work good is the silhouette, the texture, right? Uh, combined together the colors. But when you have a stone. It's like it's just a gray blob, right? So it's it's really hard to make a gray blob look good. So it it, it is it's really challenging, and it's all it's about I think like stylized art is definitely like about courage, right? So it's like you know when you have like a wooden plank, you have to be not scared of bending it and and moving it, and you know just just like breaking that silhouette until until it looks good. So it, it's it's a lot of courage. My earlier art was uh, like 
quite bad because because I would I would be scared of like breaking the silhouette, right? I, everything would be very like flat and 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 well not so good. And and in Lionhead, you know, my my lead, I was still I kind of was quite a better, but my lead was like, oh, you you really need to break that silhouette. So I, I was just going crazy with the shapes, and and that's where I kind of build that courage that oh, actually, you know, the planks don't have to be straight; they yeah. can be whatever I want them to be, kind of thing. You know, it's that ability to um, be open to like. I think I think that's also like that's the thing with like concept art. It's like the one thing that I respect the hell out of people who are doing concept art, and obviously it's a massive difference between that and illustration. But and yeah. it's, it's like what you're talking about here. But it's like instantly it's just ignoring the whole idea of perfection and just explore and just concentrating on yep. exploration yep. it's so key and i think um i'm not sure what it was like when you were at university but i'm pretty sure every student tends to do this or and just just artists in general but it's like everyone always has this idea of everything has to be perfect but it yep. takes away that creativity like the juice yep. like the juice from the art and you want to make things as just and you want to have fun like, and i think that's a lot of issues like a lot of people are um kind of taken away from the art because they're so focused on oh i need to get this um standard quickly and stuff and it's just ruining it a wee bit where yep. they just yep. start just having fun with it they'll naturally get better because they're progressing that is that is very true and that that was actually on spyro that was that was the challenge i had right because basically so i when i worked on spyro it was a freelance it wasn't i wasn't in a studio right so okay. and, and the way uh, toys for bob kind of like commissioned spyro is there was quite a bit of uh, you know outsource artists mm -hmm. and we all were, were given just a solid level like make this level right and we didn't have much time so like each level I, I think I had a month or two per level, right? And uh, since it was my second job, you know, I was only doing it part time. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and that's where it's like it gets really into perspective because it's like you have to think about the whole image, right? You don't like if I was focusing on every little stone in that scene or every little piece of grass, it would not ever get made because I would waste so much time. Reality is I had, oh, I had a list of assets I really need. For instance, I needed rocks, right? So I would make a rock and then I duplicate it a thousand times and see how far I can push it without it looking weird, right? Yeah. So I was trying to work as fast as I can and you always just have to think about the, the big picture, right? If you focus too much on a small thing, especially if you're an environment artist and not a prop artist, it, 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 it really drags you down. Like, you just have to think about the whole thing. And if something is not exactly perfect, well, if you're playing a game and you're going to run past this object with, with the speed of light, right, this, it doesn't really have to be perfect. It just has to serve the the, the overall image, right? So yeah, I think that's what's important. Exactly, yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. Because, like, when, when it comes to, um, like, I want to, like, I like this, I like where we're going with this because it's making it branch out a lot further. Um, when it comes to um, 3D, this is actually one topic I'd actually really like to dwell, uh, dwell into, is um, I think um, a lot of artists, obviously, since everyone's working their portfolio and stuff, and everyone's like, obviously, they have their little niche or area that they want to work into and stuff, for whether it's film, whether it's game, stylized, um, realistic, what's your, what's your thoughts on 3D artists not having much um, concept ability, like actual design ability? Does that make sense? <laughs> Hello. Hey. It's, yeah, you broke off there. Yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, it's all good. Yeah, these things happen all the time. But uh, yeah, so back to the question of what we're talking about, because uh, it did obviously cancel out. Sorry about that, folks. The, the joys of the internet. That's um, <laughs> my great Wi-Fi I've got here. Um, so um, yeah, back to where we were. So when it comes to um, obviously concept art and stuff and 3D, what's your thoughts on... 3D artists not having much design ability. Right. Um. That was that one is 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 tough, right? Because when I started 3D, I literally thought that this is what you ha kind of have to have. You know, I thought, oh, if you're making your pieces of 3D, that means you have to know how to design those pieces of 3D. But when I started working, I realized, oh wait, I'm just copying the concept artists all the time, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it's like if you want to be just an artist who works in the game industry design ability to a basic level probably you should have but you don't have to be able to like you know create this crazy yeah. crazy environment with, from your own head yeah. and you can use the concept artist but having said that i think you know when i work when you're you know working in the industry it's like when you have this ability of like giving ideas and you know and coming up with your own 
things and making concept look better, I think it's only going to play well for you, right? So it's like it's one thing of getting into the industry, but it's a whole other game when you're in the industry and you're trying to climb the ladder. And I think the design skill would definitely help you with that. It's, I think it's like, um, I think the, the reason why I brought this question is because obviously a lot of people have different opinions on different things. And mm-hmm. it's, um, the biggest debate um, is obviously portfolio and the requirements yeah. that artists need. But yeah. I think this is um, it's one of those catch-22 situations in which it's kind of... I wouldn't say it's hard to answer, but it's like different studios require different things. Uh, I'd say so, yeah. I'd say so. And then there's like this... Also, different studios kind of require different levels of standard um, depending on the size of the company and their needs. And I think yeah. a lot of people have to realise that... Well, like for me, the biggest thing was always patience and being patient with... or well, being patient with... Um, certain studios and just being honest with my work but yeah if we're going to talk about portfolio I was just um is there any things that stand out to you that are just necessary or like, like in portfolio place? today i'd say it's like it's very interesting because industry quite changed in the past like five years i'd say when i started working and 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 now it used to be that most of the art was made in the house but now you know you have these outsource companies and so now props are most of the time made elsewhere right and usually a studio would have a guy who does the uh, sort of the flagship props right like the examples for the outsource to copy from mm-hmm. but you don't get a lot of prop artists anymore uh, on warframe we have we have quite a few, but because we do, you know, f- free-to-play models, so we have the dudes who make guns and dudes who make, like, sellable items, but as far as the props go, we do outsource as well. In Lionhead, I was pretty much the only guy, me and another guy were making props in the studio, and everybody else, everything else was outsourced, and we had a bunch of, like, 10 artists doing levels, right? right. So I'd say today in your portfolio, having a an environment is definitely definitely something you should have. So, like, props are great, but, but having, having this um, sort of a little bit bigger piece doesn't even have to be, like, you know, huge level or anything. It just has to be, like, you know, a small little corner or, you know, something just to show that you're, you, you can see the big picture and not just make, you know, props. Yeah, so like almost like a diorama. As, as yeah, just... dioramas are probably the best. Yeah, I'd say they, they look cool and, you know, and they really sell your ability to make environments for sure, yeah. Because, like, with me, um, I've been... How, how could I describe it? I've um, My focus is to, like... I don't tend to be one of those people that just tries to apply to everywhere, if that makes sense. Yeah. I've been very direct and just been honest with myself. Like, where do I want to be? Um, am I crap at this? Am I good at this? Or am I great at this? And just being straight to the point. Um, and I've obviously applied that to my portfolio, trying to make um, that progression. But when it comes to um, portfolio and... Um, the, the weird thing is is that I've been getting told so many different things from different places, but I like what you said there about the props thing because basically um, I think it's just been it's been almost a year, so I was talking to this company, um, I won't say any names, <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to keep safe. Sure. Um, but basically what I was, what I was told was that um, all I needed was, was props to, uh, to, go for an right. for, to go for an environment art position. <laughs> but sure. then I um, talked to a person um, probably about six months or six eight months not uh, after and then i was told the complete opposite i got told i needed to have the ability to recreate a concept exactly yes i think i think this is the kind of a little bit of an issue right now in the yeah. industry and that is basically the guy who makes props is an environment artist yeah. and the guy who makes environment is an environment artist and whenever you apply you never know which one you're going to get right yeah. and it's like when i worked in fable and when i worked in in warframe both of the times i was kind of hired to do environments Mm -hmm. but i am like obsessed with sculpting so like i was more more interested in making props so both of the times i had to like you know specifically mention to my leads that like oh i i really enjoy doing props more than i do making environments right so but like i have my friend at, at work and he's basically an environment artist and i'm an environment artist we have the same exact position we work on the different sides of the building and we do completely different things right so it's 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 weird they should really like rename it to a prop artist versus environment artist let's say because like um, there's always been like this sort of like debate, I guess. Um, I think I think a lot of things started kicking off when um, I think it was when Jurassic Park was made. Um, basically, what was happening was um, I remember there was a time when 
like texture artists or these individual roles weren't a thing so content, yeah they were like there wasn't like these like specific like roles so there wasn't a texture yeah. artist there wasn't a concept uh, well, there, well there was a concept artist but there wasn't like a like lighting artists and stuff and now they've like almost given like everything a title and yeah uh, i guess obviously th- that's a good thing and a bad thing in the sense that obviously it depends on obviously if you know exactly what you want to do then great brilliant go do, yeah. have a blast do whatever you want to do but i think because like when you look at job stuff like for example if you're going to an art station or you're going to certain places uh, for jobs they literally highlight so many different things and it's like the things are almost like not that much different anymore if that makes sense like there's not maybe you you, you can say it if i'm wrong if you, if you disagree but it's like it feels like sometimes like a lot of things are very similar if that makes sense you mean job job description wise yeah and also like um like the roles like do you like for example um those they'll, they'll say what um what you require and stuff like yeah they'll say like you need to be able to do high poly sculpting low poly baking and so forth and like they'll list tons of things and then you'll tr- like switch over to for example as we're talking about environment and prop artists there's no yeah. dif- difference at all in their requirements. No, not really, no, because environment artists, like, basically their job is to put levels together from the props already made, right? But in the same time, it, 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 they still model. So it's like if they have to have, like, you know, if they say putting buildings together and they don't match, they have to be able to create a quick, you know, bridge between those two buildings to make sure that they, they match. So the, the job is the same. They, I, I'd say environment <laughs> artists have just a little bit more responsibility than a prop artist would. But, Definitely. yeah, it's that that's true yeah and 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 you know right now there's there's so many different like little like it's like when i started there was no such thing as a weapon artist but now there's literal job description a weapon artist you know what i mean and i remember even i even remember when i was in uni i had a guy and he was just like making tanks all the time and i'm like what are you doing man you can't just make tanks all the time make something else he's like i'm gonna be a tank artist i'm like there's yeah. no such thing as a tank artist. Exactly. Well, today I'm sure I'm pretty sure there's a, probably a job description somewhere a tank artist yeah. somewhere in the world of tanks or something, you know. Yeah, there'll be something crazy, um, which is I guess a good thing if that's obviously where you want to go. But, that's true. Yeah. Um, right. So I always like obviously when I'm doing these podcasts, um, I always like to talk about um, certain topics. I try not to make it too cliche or, or always the same, but um, sure. I guess I'll I'll get one of the cliche ones out of the way first, but it's like uh, the software question, <laughs> um, okay. or based off um, just maybe your workflow, um, or could you maybe go into a wee bit of a uh, um, not too much depth, but just tell us about like sure. what, what tends to be your workflow when it comes to making um, 3D environments. Right. Um, well, first of all, just to just to clarify this, I've, I'm a strong believer that like software literally does not matter, right? Yeah, so like when you have your, when you have a great portfolio, like nobody ever is gonna gonna be like, do you use Maya or Max? And you're like Maya. Oh, we can't hire you because you use we use Max up in here, right? Yeah. So, uh, and every company, well, all the companies I worked in, and certainly like big ones, will never have problem of giving you whatever software you need, yeah. as long as it's gonna make you, you know, a better artist, right? But right now the sort of industry standard for games i'd say is to know max or maya uh i think like everywhere i worked is using max although everybody always tend to say that maya is the industry standard yeah, that's but the but most companies have both right and in 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 digital extremes right now max is the main software but a lot of guys have moto and a lot of guys have maya so it's you know you can ask for it it's it's, it's some companies that use like uh, you know uh, engines that have no visual representation like uh, havoc or whatever uh, they would have like a maya workflow for instance so you have to export the props from maya or levels from maya mm-hmm. so you would have to learn a little bit of maya but you can still like you know model in max import in maya export and that's how actually Epic Mickey worked. So I kind of modeled in Max, then went to Maya export kind of thing. So yeah, so Max or Maya, um, then you obviously uh, ZBrush, well, at least for me, but I'd, I'd say like at this point, ZBrush is definitely an industry standard for both character and environment. So you have to have, you know, some kind of skill in ZBrush. Um, 
and substance and that's Design. probably about it yes like substance painter substance designer it's it's not as uh, as often known in the industry it's, well as far as i know like only maybe two guys know how to use designer in in our studio yeah. uh, but painter is basically replaced photoshop at this point so so painter is a, a must i remember actually uh, i have i didn't know substance until they got to uh, digital extremes wow. so when it comes yeah, okay. yeah yeah well they don't ask right so they yeah, don't they don't really Yes. And if you're good they'll teach you in five minutes right but uh yeah i got in and i was i, I just so used to doing my textures in photoshop right mm -hmm. so i was just doing it in photoshop you know sitting there drawing and then they're like what are you doing man <laughs> i'm like drawing. <laughs> it's like yeah you could be like one million times faster if you did it in painter then i literally discovered painter and in five minutes i'm like where have this been all my life you can't be but, generators man generators are the way <laughs> exactly but but uh but yeah i'd say it's like software is not important don't don't need to focus on this too much but in the same time like these are the industry standard ones so if yeah. you start from scratch right now then max uh painter and zbrush are your best friends I had one random question when it comes to software. What do you use for cloth? Uh, what do I? Sorry. Uh, what do you use for like cloth and stuff? Or cloth. Uh, I use uh, I use Max cloth. All right. Okay. Yeah, and then I drop it in ZBrush and stylize it a bit. But yeah, Max cloth seems to work Perfect. pretty well. Yep. Nah, cool. Awesome. Um, so obviously we've talked about quite a quite um a lot already um but when it comes to i guess the main podcast as a whole we'll start going into the main topic of uh, student education and yeah. um gather your thoughts on just how things are going for students at the moment in regards to um the education system and um, we can maybe discuss like the do's and don'ts um mm -hmm. of your experiences and so forth and um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up my questions that i've asked you uh, let's see do 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 I'll just be one second. Sure thing. The great thing about doing podcasts is I could just edit. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, always <laughs> although, makes, always makes although, I, you know, if I was editing a podcast, I would probably kill myself because it's, uh, you know, hour, two hour of just you have to re-listen to it maybe three or four times oh. before you get all the mistakes out. Talking it's pretty it, hard. It's, it's the crazy thing. So I was doing that um, uh, for my last podca uh, podcast podcast. Um, there was a few issues that I was coming across, but I couldn't. I couldn't remember what time it was at, and I was like, "Oh boy, whereabouts is it?" So I was just like hunting them down. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Right. Okay. So the questions. Here we go. Um, mm -hmm. um, first one is, what do you wish you learned when you were studying at university? I'm, um, yeah. Well, I think like. Um... Hmm, that's an interesting one. I I went to a very good university, my friend. Okay, <laughs> so awesome. good to hear. I kind of, I kind of, you know, I don't even know. Like we've, we, it's like university was an interesting one because everything you needed to know was there if mm -hmm. you were just willing to learn it, right? Yeah. And the teachers, well, like, like, well, definitely in my uni, but you know, I didn't just randomly apply to a random university. I went to a specific one because I knew that's that's where I want to be. And uh, but yeah, all the teachers were from the industry. You know, all the um, uh, all the all the sort of modules were up to date with like the current standards. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. I don't know, like the only thing, you know, I think they should teach in university, especially in the CG one, well, it's uh, certainly in mine, is business, because I think that's where, you know, it's very important for, uh, especially like a young artist to understand how much he's worth. And, yeah, and that is, has been a big issue for the industry in general because there are so many talented people who sell themselves short and then when you kind of follow up and like say let's say you know torfric or somebody or well that's too big of a name but let, let's just say you have an amazing artist yeah. who's just like oh i want to work in the industry so he gets hired and maybe he's from you know i don't know somewhere where the wages are a bit lower so he goes in to work and he charges you know some irrelevant price that is like half of what normal artists makes mm -hmm. you know and then and then the next artist comes along and the company's like oh well we got this guy really cheap so we should probably get this guy really cheap i wish you know it, it, artists kind of understood their their self-worth because because it, it really is important for the industry in general and for themselves too that's i, I put, that's a great um answer because that's one thing obviously um i'll admit i've been struggling with and it's like trying to understand 
where your skill set lies. And um, yeah. I think the issue is like exactly what you said there is like, um, because obviously we, we tried to compare ourselves to the people that we're either working with or the people that we strive to kind of get to that same level as them, if you know what I mean. Exactly. But, but because of the debate around the idea of experience, it kind of instantly drops your your wages yeah. and your income. Um, yeah, and that's very true, yeah. You're definitely not going to be making a million dollars when you're st- when you're starting out, right? Course, but yeah. it, it's like, it's most of the time not like permitted for you to discuss your wages with you know your colleagues or with the outside world you usually have to keep it to yourself which is kind of interesting but uh but uh yeah but it's still like whenever you get your first job it don't ask anybody directly how much do you make but but try and you know learn the subject and figure out oh what does environment artist make how much should it like what's the average salary and stuff like that? And I think like in in my uni it was it was a little bit great because we had we had a bunch of dudes from the industry coming over for talks, and there would be like uh, there would be questions about how much does the artist make and and yeah. and, and, and and those will be answered. So, so most people in my uni at least had a rough idea of what like a senior guy makes in a studio kind of thing. Definitely, because like um, one of my. Uh... Uh, favorite artist um he does stream i'm not sure if you heard of this again john troy nickel he does mm, so don't think so, so I'm, I'm really bad with names I, I i probably would remember him if, if i saw his art <laughs> so like basically um he has his own um company um he lives in new zealand um he worked at weta <clears throat> and uh, it's called i has toys but um basically he was talking about um the way he always judged things first was um like how much do you need to survive? I know it sounds very. Yeah. Some people are like, "Oh, it's so obvious," but it's like yeah. being realistic, but also making sure that you're not, like you said, selling yourself short. But um, but base your situation on right. How much is your rent? And then yeah. tally tally that in. How much do you need? To Absolutely. Pay? And it's all these small things that you need to... Yeah, like, bare minimum, like, you know, you have to be able to, like, whatever city you are in, you know, like, especially yeah. if you like, get a job in London, you know, there's so many, like, jobs in London for, like, you know, uh, a f- um, uh, what you call them, a runner or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and, and, and you can't uh, you can't really, like, afford to live in London on the salary you get there. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm a big like supporter i guess of 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 uh you know people just getting that experience right yeah. but it's like in the same time i feel like you have to be able at least to afford to survive right yeah. it, it, that's quite healthy. important like your health exactly stars, exactly like... exactly like... and it's but like my strategy like for any starting out artist right now you know not to worry about money as much on their first job because their first job is about like getting into the industry and once you have that first experience on your portfolio you're like oh okay now you can get more jobs for sure like you know that it's possible but uh on the for the first job i'd say is is basically just building your portfolio because when you get into the first studio and that was my problem when i got to uh the, the blitz games and started working on epic mickey problem is when you're a junior you're treated like a junior and and most of the time you'll be like oh you're making collisions today or oh you're making uvs today or oh you're fixing bugs today and you don't get to create art and it's like as much as the experience matter what's more what matters more is 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 some of that epic mickey on your portfolio for instance right yeah. and so it's it's very important to on the first job, not to ask for money or for anything like that, but but push yourself to get into the loop of actually creating things. And it's like if you got in there and you're making collisions, you know, go to your lead and be like, oh, you know, I love making collisions. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I wish I could do it more. But do you think I could maybe like find a concept and make something for the game so I have something of mine in there? You know, and they most likely will tell you yes. If you're a junior, you don't get paid that much. They're not wasting a lot of money. And if you succeed, then they got a new prop. So you know, that's I think what you should definitely push for on your first job is just to create something you know it's like make, make sure that you can prove yourself first exactly exactly um so i liked what, when you were saying obviously so we started talking about um like you said um your it was your idea of business being important um when it comes yeah. to what you wish you learn um, yeah one of the main things i guess i've always um made sure i've made as a priority in some way or another is networking and yeah i've never the one thing I've always uh, said to everyone in every podcast or anyone I've ever met and is not to be afraid to ask questions. Like, that's the biggest thing I've always had an advantage over a lot of people. Yeah. Just because I've not cared if someone's just said, don't talk to me. 
Like yeah. obviously, obviously, it depends on how. Like obviously, be professional, be respectful. Yeah. Don't pester people. Like there comes a point when you can tell you're just being annoying. But yeah, it it's plays such a vital role early on, I believe, just to get noticed because it's like you said. There's a lot of great artists out there who either are not getting the wages that they want. Or yeah. They're, um, or they're not getting enough attention that they deserve. Like, there's a lot of yeah. great art st- uh, people in an art station. Like, there was a person that I'm, I literally yesterday, I'm trying to remember his name, but basically what, I think he was working on, what's what's that game? Uh, it's, a, it's a game about, like, humanoid, like, it's like androids that are humans. But basically... Right. Um, and it's, uh, I, I, I can't believe I've forgotten the name. But anyway, his artwork was so insane, but he only had, like, I don't know, like, 300 followers. And this guy deserves like, I yeah, know, a lot more. Like for example, is there's a lot that, of artists who I think deserve way more than they deserve. So that is that is very true, and I think that's my problem as well in a way. Although I do have quite a bit of followers, but well, not quite a bit. I have like just under two thousand, which is not that's like a, crazy that's, amount. That's just crazy to me. That's insane. <laughs> well, yeah, but in the same time, it's like you know, you get somebody like Orb who has like twenty thousand, and then you get like Torfric who has a hundred thousand. So it's it's yeah. all relative, right? But uh, yeah, I think that's part of the the business thing is is how to you know increase like especially today in the age of social media, it's like yeah. how do you increase your presence on social media? Yeah. But to your point about networking, I think that's the most important thing in the industry is networking and like it's like you know when you sort of on these like you know events or whatever and you trying to meet people there and you coming up to people that's probably like it's a good thing to do because you never know you might stand out they might remember you and they yeah. might think about you in the future but definitely when you you know new in the studio and you're all shy and you're walking around you're trying to keep to yourself yeah. and you're hiding behind your desk that's where it's like networking is the most important thing because the friends you make in that studio will help you out in the future. And that literally what happened to me because I got into Blitz. I made a lot of friends, you know, Blitz closing down. My friend calls me. He's like, oh, I'm already at Rare. Do you want to awesome. want me to pass your uh, portfolio along? Yeah. I go there and then it, I'm in Rare. My lead is like, oh, uh, Lionhead's coming over tomorrow. Do you want me to say a word for you and see if you be interested in working for them? I'm like, oh, damn straight. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I did not apply for a job since I got my first job ever. Like oh, I've right. been offered jobs throughout my career the entire way. Like even my freelance, I don't even ask for it. Like I just sit home, I get an email from Activision or somebody and they like, oh, would you like to work for us? And that's only because, you know, I have friends there, I have friends here. Like for Activision, it was a guy found me on art station about four years ago. Uh-huh asking me oh would you like to work on the startup project and i was it was quite high quality usually when guys ask you for a startup project it's always like you know some guy in the basement with a bunch of his 16 year old friends and they're trying to make a game you would love to help but you can't help them all right yeah. but uh this guy was like oh look at this concept art we made and it was all like you know triple a quality and i was like oh this is great he's like yeah unfortunately we're trying to sh- get the budgeting right now but it's it's kind of not working out. So we, we're trying to see if, if we can get you on board and, and hopefully we'll pay you as we go along, you know. And now I, I was so, like, surprised by the quality that I was like, oh, you know what, I will I will help you. But unfortunately, that was the, literally the time as I was moving to Canada. Right. So I get to Canada. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunately, can't help you right now because because the whole Canada move was a little bit uncertain because there was, like, the visas thing and all that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and, so, and then he calls me, like, uh, half a year later and he's like oh dude i'm a lead in uh, activision now so do you want to work on spyro and i'm like uh yeah <laughs> and, and that's 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 yeah so networking especially when you're in your first studio just just make friends as fast as you can that will really help you out in the future especially with your peers not don't have to make friends with the sound guys because they'll never you know well i mean you, you should make friends with everybody but you know what i mean it's like at least environment artist your lead is like you know don't treat lead as like this guy who doesn't like have humanity also make him his your friend because all these people will one way or another stay in contact and will get you help in future you know is that the day like we're all doing something that we love to do and yeah. The day, like, you want to enjoy it, and um, this was like this was the thing. It was like um, so when I I got my first um three D job um basically doing architectural design. Yeah. And um, like I was on like the lowest of the low wages, but I was having such a blast doing it. Like I was yeah. so much fun because of the people around me, and it makes such a big yeah. difference. And because of like you said, it's like the, those those people are your stepping stones and your progression. Like you were saying, 
and um, it's pl- played a big part in it, and it always helps. And at the end of the day, it's like you said, it's friends that you can know forever. And exactly, you, know, you never know when you could work with them again. And it- as everyone always says, it's like the industry, even though it's so big, it's still so small and it, you never know what could pop up it's it's very true it's very true like l- literally right now a little, little freelance uh, project i'm doing is for a guy who was my lead at at, at my first job you know it's 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 it is a very str- like and uh, well I, I don't know you ever heard of hertfordshire university mm, maybe sort of yeah so hertfordshire is <laughs> considered like so you have Bournemouth and Hertfordshire, basically two yeah. best schools for 3D in in the UK, according to themselves, I guess. <laughs> but they do have a lot of industry uh, experience, and a lot of kids get get hired. Perfect. But uh, yeah, so I'm in Canada right now in a small town called London that is miles away from Toronto, and uh, I have four dudes from Hertfordshire University working here with me. It's yeah, it's insane. crazy. It's 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 very that's small. That's You're very right. That's, that's crazy. Yep. Because like. Like, um, I guess like based on what you said there as well, it's like one of the things I think would be really cool to talk about is like, um, do, like obviously like you have all these different contacts and stuff, and like you're reaching out to people and stuff. Ha- is there any advice you could give Taurus? Um, this is gonna be I'm not sure if it's gonna be, how hard it's gonna be to answer, but like when to accept a job and when not to accept a job. Like, is it kind of right? Is it hard to kind of? I think like it's like this. It's like when you're starting, like your first ever job. You know, when you're just in uni, it's like just take whatever. Yeah. But also, like, because when I was in uni, I had a couple like j- sketchy offers. You know, don't accept sketchy offers. I, I'd say there was like a guy who was making a book and he wanted to start this whole animation company, but he had like ten quid in his pocket, and yeah. you know, like don't don't go for that. But I'd say like first job, just just whatever whatever you can get your hands on because like it's like even if it's like that's what happened to me, right? So I didn't actually finish university. I left on the second year, oh, really? and what what happened was this, uh, Blitz Games came to university to do a presentation, and then they looked around, gave some critic uh, crits for the portfolios. They looked at mine. They emailed me next day, like, would you like to come for summer summer work? I'm like, yay, yeah, I'd like to come, and then. They were like, would you like to stay forever? And I was like, yay. And so, like, your first job, especially if it's a triple A, is, like, is, is your, like, god, right? Yeah. You, you you take that job no matter what. If you have to take a gap year, you, you take that job. If you have to, like, you know, leave your family and friends behind and move to Australia, take that job, right? So yeah. that's, that is, that is a must. But, like, I'd say... If you're a triple A, if you want to work in triple A and you want to make like you know uh, Xbox and PlayStation games, it 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 probably is a best idea if you push towards working for those things. Like, don't go to mobile games if you if you want to do PlayStation and Xbox because the guys at the triple A would not look at mobile games with the same you know uh, with the same way as they would look at you if you worked on a triple A game. But having said that, I think it's it's much easier to actually get a job, say in Ubisoft working on Assassin's Creed, than it is to get a job somewhere in Warframe in a smaller studio where there's a smaller team, right? Because it's like Ubisoft right now has like a one two thousand artists in a in one room working on Assassin's Creed making every rock, you know. So it's 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 quite easy, and I think that's where your first aim should be is like a project that you can put in your portfolio, and everybody be like, "Whoa, he worked on Assassin's Creed or 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 Star Wars or whatever," something and that would something big, and yeah. then that would literally like after that you never have to work worry about work any ever again. So that's that's what I would push for. But again, like if whatever offer they give you, just take it, no matter what. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> there's obviously been going to that a bit more in depth, but that that was insane. That was awesome. Very cool. Um, so the next question um, that I always ask, um, we've, I'm going to ignore one of the questions because I think we kind of we kind of answered it and you kind of sure. said um, what you had to say to make it um, add a lot of depth to it. Um, I guess. How could, what was it? Uh, what would you say was obviously you said uh, the university you um, you went to was great. Mm-hmm. Stuff, but what would you say were the the main benefits so obviously you said that you had like for example the university i went to i absolutely loved the university i went to um, Aberdeen yep. university 
And yeah, I see. I don't know much about Scottish Scottish university, so I don't know. Don't know what ones, which ones are the better ones. But uh, Alberta is great. I'll, I'll take your that. word for it. Alberta is great. <laughs> like it's it's pretty much exactly what you said. Um, I have obviously I have no idea what it was like at your university, but based on what you're saying, it was it was really good. Um, just to give everyone a heads up who's listening, and if you're in the UK, just make sure to check out um, the universities that we're discussing as well. Um, what was the name of the university you said that you went uh, to? Hart- Hertfordshire. Yeah, so make sure to check that out. And I'd also say check out Alberta University because that's where I went. And I was blessed when I was there. I had a lot of great um, lecturers there. Um, so when it comes to the benefits, um, obviously you have, like you said, you had great um, teachers and stuff. I take it there was like <coughs> all, the, all the great software that was required. Everything was there. Yeah. But, but there was, was there anything... I guess that kind of give it the edge, like because obviously. Yeah, like what happened to me was, you know, I was looking for university. Like at the time, I didn't know mm-hmm. what what to pick, and I've bumped in on the showreel of Hertfordshire University, and they have actual showreel, and it would like bunch of like all the best of the best students get to be on that showreel. But yeah. but I looked at it like, whoa, this is like. But they mostly focus on VFX because right. they're right next to Soho, so it's like you know, it's like VFX guys in this university just literally chilling, drinking coffee every day, kind of thing from from literal industry. So uh, so um, yeah, I looked at their showreel. I was like, oh my god, this is great. So at first I went because because the showreel was great, but once I got there, I realized that the showreel was great because the artists who were featured on that showreel were pretty good. F- to begin with or they were like extremely passionate in the three years time they they have reached that level somehow yeah. but uh, the the greatest thing that my university gave me was the networking because it's like because because they had industry people coming over literally on a monthly basis like tomorrow it's lionhead day after it's blitz then yeah. it's i don't know like the 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 vfx guys from from uh, light and magic and uh uh, NPC would come over all the time and uh, you know you you just get this access to these people all the time and they look at your work and if you're good enough they will you know remember you and will contact you in the future so I think that that networking is the best thing so like whenever you pick a university if if it has a lot of like industry recognition or 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 at least teachers who have legit been to the industry because I applied for two universities I used to live in Stoke-on-Trent at the time all right okay One of my and uh Oh really? Yeah. So uh, so uh, I applied for Hertfordshire as my like. Oh my god, I want to go there, but I didn't know if I was good enough. And I applied for Stoke on Trent uh, University, which is Staffordshire University, just because. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I went to Staffordshire University, and I had a pretty bad portfolio at the time. Like it wasn't bad. I already kind of had a good you know grasp of 3d yep. didn't know any brush at the time though just all hard surface and uh, you know the guy at heart at, at Staffordshire was like well i can't really teach you anything here and it you know it didn't seem like he he was from the industry or th- he knew like the, the pipelines or whatever so i think that's like the thing to look for is a place where teachers know what they're talking about and they have some kind of connection to the industry or they are from the industry th- itself i think that's like um so one of the things that I've always, um, I guess, I guess wary might be the right word choice is uh, like being careful. But um, yeah. So I was, I was, I would say I was kind of lucky when I, um, with the way my education went. Like I was, I was really fortunate in the sense that. So I started off um, in Aberdeen in Scotland. And, yeah. And I did a college course, so I started in college first, and then I went to. Um, so I went from Aberdeen College and then I went to Edinburgh College and then my third and fourth year I did in uh, Aberdeen University in Dundee. And, yeah. Um, even that in itself describes what you're saying about networking, and um, that played a huge part with helping with jobs and stuff. But um, like you said about the quality of the lectures and stuff, it really does help. Like one of my um, one of my favorite lecturers who is at Aberdeen um, called Gordon, and um, he worked at Rockstar. And yeah. There was a few other um, artists as well, um, lecturers who worked at Rockstar, and yeah, and I guess you guys were right next to Rockstar somewhere there, right? Um, yeah. Um, and it, it plays such a like it makes your mind just at ease knowing that you're getting the right information. Yeah. And um, I was lucky to have him as my fourth year um, mentor. So basically, for my dissertation, Gordon would go through in depth about my strengths, my weaknesses, um, because I had this sort of um moment in fourth year where for some reason i transitioned from environment art to character art in my last year and i've never right. done character art before 
<laughs> and um, so I was literally, Oops. <laughs> I was nailing anatomy, like well, I was like trying to like nail anatomy, like the basics of it, like the super basics. And I personally believe it takes fifteen years, years to master basics properly, um, of anatomy because anatomy is such a yeah. big topic. And um, like just the discussions I had with him, it made it so much easier. Like you were talking about how base meshes play such a huge part to improve your eye and stuff because that's yeah. my weakness. But to not go too much in depth, it's like like we're saying, um, understand um, the places that you're applying to. Don't just look through the perspectives. Literally visit the le- visit the place. Try and get a, a feeling of the place. Go to open yeah. days of their space. That's that that I'd say this is the and like it's like Google your university. Go on images, go on videos, Vimeo, yeah. and see if there's anything actually produced from there. You know what I mean? It's because you will still get like even if you apply for like I'd say like in Staffordshire University like like zero. Well, at least at the time when I was there, like the game course was just nothing, right? It right. it would give you zero knowledge about the industry. But yeah. maybe today's changed. But uh, you know. Every university will have a graduate who will get into the industry, right? Yeah. Because in the end of the day, none of this really matters. What matters is your passion. Like, you don't even have to go to university. In fact, most people don't. And, uh, you know, just, yeah, your your own dedication, like how much time you can put into it. Having said that, having a, a, a mentor who can guide you in the right directions from the start will just shorten that path, right? Because it's yeah. like, like I, my, my problem was, is, you know, I started being like a generalist from the start like characters environments lighting rigging animation whatever i can grab my hands on and that kind of like you know probably postponed my first job by like four years if if i just knew if i just knew exactly where i need to be and exactly what i need to do then i would be way faster at doing that so that's i think that's a great thing about like a good lecturer in university or just a knowing somebody who knows what they're doing is is that is that guidance right um that, that's perfect so um one of the main questions i've asked every person on <coughs> excuse me everyone on the podcast so far it's a a very debatable question but i like to answer it because i like to get people and um, the right information and i understand yep. it's one of those situations in which it depends on uh, your, your circumstances so yeah obviously you had a great time at university i had a great time at university but would you say you recommend uni um, over online courses or would you say both are just as good? Obviously, it depends on where you go. And See, that, I think it depends on, first of all, you as a person. Because yeah. it's like, you know, when I was in university, like a lot of the guys from my year got jobs, but there were dudes who got into the university for the sake of going into the university. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh, I'm going in because it's about partying and chilling. Yeah. But the only people who get jobs fast are people who like never go to the parties, yeah. spend 24 hours in front of the computer doing 3D. Yeah. And I think that's that's most important important thing but as far as like the online versus university i think it's it's a tricky one i I think it really depends on you as a person if you're disciplined and you and you like you're okay with sitting doing 3d all day and like not getting bored by it then the the online courses are good enough and they're cheaper like especially now i know in scotland i'm guessing university is still free but but in uk it's nine grand in america it's something stupid like 30 grand a year you know it's it's uh, uh it's you 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 know it, you you want to add that into the perspective but yeah. online course would cost you maybe three or four I, I don't really know how much they cost and i had a bunch of friends especially animators you know uh, who went to the animation uh mentor that's what i, I think as well I yeah did yeah and so they true. basically finished you like there was a girl actually she's a she's a, my friend's girlfriend and we graduated at the same time well they graduated i haven't actually graduated but they kind of str- i think they struggled to find jobs for a while okay. and then she went on the animation mentors and literally like as soon as she graduated she she got a job okay. i think like animation mentors is 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 very like sort of focused on the craft it's like the the noman tutorials you know what i mean it's yeah. it's 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 very much about that it's not about like anything else and i, I don't really know because i never took any of those courses but, no, but yeah but i think i think it, it doesn't matter in the end i think it's just you have to make that decision for yourself and it's whatever 
you think works better with your personality. Yeah. But having said that, I think if you're if you know you can't get into a university that has industry standard teachers or that kind of connection to the industry, then definitely online mentoring is way better than than university. Because like the, the main reason I bring this up every time, and I guess some people may be a bit confused or a bit frustrated sometimes hearing it, but it's because um, obviously I'm lucky in the, in the sense that in Scotland we don't get charged. Like we don't get to pay anywhere near what yes. anyone else has to. Obviously, obviously I pay for. We got, we have to pay more so that you can go for free. Unfair. <laughs> exactly. But it's like um, obviously I, like, I'm really lucky in that in that sense. But it's like the the reason why I bring it up is mainly because of like for example people in America. Yeah. And people in certain countries that, um, like obviously I know England still has to pay for it, but. If we had to compare ourselves to America, we're no, nothing. Oh so yeah, no, we're still because and, you know you don't you don't pay back your loan until you make yeah. a, a wage, so it's like not horrible, you know. Yeah, definitely. Whereas, like, I've always been like, um, like for example, if I had to give you guys examples who who are listening at the moment, um, obviously it depends on what sort of art you're looking into, but there's a thing called Learn Squared, and Learn Squared is basically run on. And they even have their own YouTube channel, and it's connected to um, a podcast called Art Cafe. Is what I was talking to at the start before we started recording. Yeah. <laughs> and um, basically, it's this school that um, brings on like the best artists from Naughty Dog, and it's not just um, one of these, um, I guess, online schools that are like right. I sp- you get one hour per week with the mentor. It's like you'll actually get something in depth. Um, yeah, because that's one of the issues I guess I've had with um, um, certain online courses is that certain online courses, um, yes, obviously they're great and yes they'll have lots of material and resources to give you, but if you're only getting one hour per week, and you're paying thousands of pounds, that's yeah, when, that's when the debate it's, comes into it's, play. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very tricky these things. You know, it's it's. I think in the end of the day, though, it's it. The bottom line really is it's it's about you. It's not about where and how, right? So it's like in the end of the day, if you dedicate your life to to make awesome three D and you focus on that like crazy, you will achieve it no matter what, no matter what university you go to or not go to, no matter no matter what, because everything's online really. Like all the like you know when I was in uni, I didn't learn three D as well as I learned networking, if you know what I mean? Like, all the 3D I was still getting from online. Like, lecturer can only give you, like, half an hour of, of, of his time in a day. Like, we had one or two lessons of modeling a week. And, you know, lecturer just come on and just do a live presentation of him bully, uh, 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 modeling of square, you know? Yeah. So it's not it's not as much about that. It's about you, like, wanting to go that extra mile, learn things, you know, or ask questions, Google it online, you know, just dedicate your time to it. You will you will get there. I think that's the bottom line. Awesome. Just dedication, you know? No, that's great. Because, like, because I was, like, exactly, obviously, it's clearly, it's clearly worked for you. You've done a great work. And uh, it's exactly what I, I've been um, working on myself and stuff and make sure I've always worked hard and stuff. It, yep, that's... It, it's so cliche, but it's obvious. There's, um, like, the one question I think I, I struggle to answer, but I, I, I'll always be supportive when anyone asks me a question. I have no harm in that. But it's, yeah. when, it's when somebody asks you, how did you get so good at this? And I'm just, like, in my head, I'm like, calm down, Ross. It's okay. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it, 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 it's A lot of people always think there's, like, a certain way to sneak around it or, like, hide away from the fact that you have to work. And yeah, um, obviously, it's- yeah. See, this it isn't. This it's it, like I've put in like in 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 university times. Like I was already married, and you know, and uh, and like I have to, I had to like basically spend like w- half an hour a day with my wife. Yeah. Just so I can get, your work get there, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's like the dedication in this is is it's like I've been doing this now, like like pr- like. In, I was in the industry for about seven years now, but I've been doing 3D for probably about 15 years. I'm 30 years old right now, so I started about 15, 16. Cool. So in that 15 years, I'm still no Torfric or Orb, right? So, yeah. you know, and I do 3D on every single day. So it's like, it's just about, you know, just, just keep doing that. And it's like, no matter what, every time you do a new model, you'll get better. And then no matter what, eventually you'll, you'll get there. But, um, yeah, I think your dedication is the most important because you can go to the best university or get a best online course, but if you're not going to do anything, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah, and that's, I think that's the only one debate that university is a wee bit flawed in the sense of 
for artists is that the degree doesn't mean anything. It, no, it's uh, literally just the quality. Like it, obviously the networks. It only means are. something if you're moving to Canada or United States yeah, or, or if the, you're going from United States to Europe. It 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 like it, it's not even that important, right? Yeah. It's like. You can get a work permit without a degree. It's just about getting like a permanent residence. So you need to get a certain amount of points and blah, blah, blah. So yeah. that's where your university plays in. But apart from that, it like, I don't know any, any, like every interview I've experienced, every conversation I had when I was getting a job, like nobody ever even asked me, like, where did you go to school? Right. It was like yeah. never a question. Well, that's the thing, actually, if you want to talk about it, I'm, I'm not sure how much time you've got, but, um, Interview would be a great topic to uh, talk about. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Or just about just a, like a basic overview of um, obviously, like you said, the main thing it's helped you since your first one was that people have just asked you to come and work for them. Yeah. But was there um, is there anything that maybe you can give that um advice on at all? Uh, for the interviews. Uh, yeah. Like, even though I personally yeah. do think it's very, I I think it, 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 it like we've elaborated on it so far but it's like quality of work and then just being yourself like being yeah, confident that's like, true yeah because yeah the interview in this industry is all about just making sure you're not a jerk right yeah. like they just don't want to hire some like first of all make sure that you are the one who who's done all the work and second of all to make sure you're you're a good person right and also to figure out the financials of the whole situation yeah. but um but uh, yeah, so like I'd say with the interview, just be confident, be nice, be polite, and and things, and always make sure that you're ready for the question how much you want to, how much money you want, you know. But most of the time, the interviews I had, well, yeah, pretty much. Like there was never I applied for a lead job once. That was a little bit, a little bit more uh, trickier because there was quite a few questions about le- leadership, le- leadership that I didn't know about, but. Um, but most of the interviews I had was just a friendly conversation. You know, we talked about games, movies we like, you know, things like that. It was it was rarely technical. Like you don't have to come and prepare. Like oh oh, I forgot how to extrude a vertex or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's not it's not like that. The interviews are usually like they already know if they're gonna hire you or not. They saw your portfolio. They're like oh this guy. You know what I mean? They, and a lot of the times, like say if you apply in Canada, for instance, they'll fly you out from Britain to Canada to, for that interview. Like you already know they're giving you a job. They're not gonna waste two thousand yeah. dollars on the on the plane ticket if they didn't know you're gonna get hired. So your only job is to not screw it up, right? Yeah. And also be reasonable with your finance, especially when you do your first job. It's like always ask for you know a little bit more than you want yeah. and always be ready to accept a little bit less than you want and that's that's about it yeah because that's one thing i was um talking about with somebody as well um not that long ago and it's like i know it's a debatable price um or range to go from but i was always thinking that um in the uk like your your starting salary depends it's between seventeen thousand, i think twenty two thousand yeah I, I yeah think, that's I about where i was on the first job yeah and i think it's like um it's like what we said earlier um and i, I, like, I like what you just said there as well is like i would always aim for like the higher offer but mm-hmm. be open and be realistic to the fact yeah that they're they will use that price as a debate and, and yeah. like you have to get that that sort yeah of the first it. number you mention will be the number they'll go off to yeah. you know and yeah, I think the finances is it's interesting because you know, like I've had experience in the industry where I and somebody else had exactly the same role, and I was literally making double the money of that other person, or you know, yeah. a lot more. the 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 wages go like they jump crazy. There's a bar of where it's like the maximum level. Nobody knows where that bar is, you know. But uh, but you know, it's like if you think something is reasonable number wise, you know, it's like. You, you ask for it right don't yeah. don't ask for millions you're never gonna get millions but you know what i mean it's yeah. it's it's important i'd say for like um well i don't want to drop numbers around but i'd say for a senior artist right yeah. in the in the industry i think 250 pounds a day is 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 somewhere they should be roughly i'm not necessarily saying that's what i want or where people should be on but mm-hmm. that's it's okay. probably like especially in the VFX, like that was the kind of number that was floating around. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, no. So okay. it's a guideline. But uh, in the same time, yeah, don't think like, don't like if you're more than a se- more than a junior, don't don't 
accept 18 grand or 20 grand you know what i mean and you will get like random offers as well it's like you know when i get offers you know the range goes like crazy like the other the other week i got a job offer from china wow. and they offered me 150,000 pound uh, 150,000 dollars a year right with the apartment paid for and everything but uh, i don't really want to go live in china so yeah. i did did That's not accept but i'm saying the 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 money goes up and down up and down but uh no, yeah it's awesome well Thank you, thank you so much for saying that. Um, I, I guess, well, we've talked about it so much so far, but is there any things that, I guess, I'm going to hit you with this question, but is there anything that you want to bring up at all that uh, when it comes to maybe other little bits of advice you think might be, um, I guess, beneficial? Yeah, um, you know, since we're talking to students, I'd say, like, portfolio is something maybe maybe I could, I could give a little bit more hints about. Okay. And, and and like um you know it, it's 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 crazy but you know i've 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 seen a lot of portfolios uh, working in the industry especially like you know in the previous studios because i wasn't necessarily ever like involved in hiring anybody or interviewing anybody but like okay. you know you know how it is like somebody applies a leader will be like oh what do you think about this guy or or about this guy but um like what's very important like just just like an advice for people who who are trying to get a job in the industry and stuff is is like the presentation of your portfolio is and that is like the biggest mistake i see a lot of artists do it's like for instance character artists right they would make a character they would make an amazing character they put them on a t-pose on the black background with horrible lighting and throw them on their art station and that's where like i think a portfolio um is very it's like this when you apply for a job especially when you don't know anybody in the company or in the industry at all your portfolio is not going to go to the lead artist or lead character artist or lead animator it's going to go to hr then from hr it's going to go to some guy and then from some guy it's going to go to the lead right yeah. so so when you apply your first you have to first impress the hr lady right who knows nothing about wireframe yeah, i can't stand that part <laughs> well unfortunately that's the reality of the situation Very but true. can 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 recognize a good picture from a bad picture yeah. but a like you know a substance substance designer tileable uh the uh wood planks right will not will not impress anybody like it's just like oh it's an orb with wood planks i don't know what he's trying to say here yeah. but uh what i'm trying to say is that like whenever you do your work your presentation is just is just as important as your as your actual assets right even for the guy who's a lead if you give him an environment that is just you know badly lit you know badly presented from bad angle it may have all the coolest props in the environment but but he's you know a human is a human it doesn't matter what he knows he's still gonna look at it and be like hey, i don't know about this picture but when you when you when you trying to do your portfolio i think that it's very important that you put as much time into lighting it presenting it post production yeah. paint over like all my screenshots on my art station they never like straight out of engine right i do yeah. a lot of post processing on them uh, i try to increase the quality as much as i can so like i do over sampling and unreal to to get the sharpest image possible and things like that and, and i think that's that's very important so like presentation of your portfolio is very important that's all i'm going to say no, no, that's great <laughs> And like, especially if you're like an animator as well, like I know it, that probably like I, I don't know as much about animation as I do about environment, but like I see in you know, a lot of like guys in my uni, for instance, who would have like animation reels and they would be like so basic. And it's like it's it's not hard to find a tutorial online on how to create like, OK, three point three, three point lighting with a nice background. Right. So 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 presentation is the key to success. That's all. <laughs> that's all I'm thinking. That's, that's, that's probably a great way to finish it off as well um but thank you so much for coming on by the way um no problem uh, what i'll do um as always um everyone who's listening i'm gonna have the whole the whole backgrounds um of alex's um art literally going to be in a slideshow i'll add all his social media make sure to go follow this guy um i think you're also saying alex that you're going to be tailing off in the future to doing your own thing um, yeah so i was like anything, that... just fire away yeah, that was my uh, that was my sort of recent uh, social media bump reason. I uh, I'm trying to you know like I've been doing the plural side tutorials for a while and uh, and uh, unfortunately 
they can't do everything I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the budgets of the company aren't like limitless. So I was thinking I had this great idea for a tutorial and, and they kind of like said, oh, you know what, Alex, let's just stick to what kind of you're doing. So next yeah. year, maybe we'll do another one. And I was thought, well, this is such a great idea for a tutorial. I really want to do it. Yeah. And I just thought I'll give it my own chance. So I'm trying to boost my social media right now and uh, and my art station following mostly because I like early next year, I'm planning to start, you know, putting some stuff on the marketplace Perfect. and it will be like cheap, cheap tutorials. Like, um, but I'm, I, I got this great idea. I don't want to spoil anything, no, no, but, okay. uh, but, uh, yeah. So the more subscribers I can get on my art station, the better. And, uh, and, um, and for those who stay tuned, we'll, we'll get some great tutorials. Yeah. So everyone who's listening, make sure to go follow this guys. And, um, that'd be awesome. And like I said, I'll add all his links in the description below. And um, if you have any questions, just um, add it in the comments as usual. Um, make sure to subscribe. It'll be great to listen to more podcasts in the future. Always leave a thumbs up. That'll be awesome. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to get back to you. I, can't, I won't be straight away, but I'll see what I can do. And uh, thanks once again, Alex, for coming on. No problem, man. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Perfect. Bye for now. Bye, Ziz. <laughs> <laughs> see you later.